Okay. This looks like a spicy one. <laughs> I have a player who constantly argues with me about using homebrew or if Unearth Arcana is official. Okay, let me calm down. Are you a dungeon master looking for 5th edition adventures and other pre-made resources you can use in your D&D game? If so, Layer Magazine has exactly what you need. Each monthly issue of Layer Magazine contains two 5th edition adventures complete with maps for use on virtual tabletops, plus a plethora of other GM resources. New monsters, puzzles, traps, magic items, NPCs, and more. DM Layer patrons receive a new issue of Layer Magazine every month and also get bonus content such as map packs and additional 5e adventures. Reduce your prep time and improve your games with Layer Magazine. Become a DM Layer patron today. Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you out here. I feel for you, and I'm gonna try to remain calm as I help you out here. I'm gonna help you look at one of your one of your problem arguments right off the bat. Um, under Earth Arcana, let's find one of these things. Draconic options. Let's just we're going to look at one of these under Earth Arcana, and. <clears throat> So this is one of the Unearthed Arcanas. Let's just read what this says right here. This playtest document. Oh, oh playtest. Okay, okay, okay. This is playtest material. Unearthed Arcana is already helping us. This it's presented for playtesting and to spark your imagination. These game mechanics are in draft form, usable but not refined by full game design and editing. Wait, what what is what does this say? Oh, they aren't officially part of the game. Okay, so back to the first part of your question. Your players arguing whether they're an official part of the game or not. Literally, every single unearthed arcana has this disclaimer in it, and it literally says they aren't officially part of the game. So the next time your player wants to get all like uppity with you and argue about Unearth Arcana being officially part of the game, just pull out an Unearth Arcana or several and show them this. You know what? Get get yourself get yourself a highlighter and highlight that part right there. On about 10 different issues of Unearth Arcana, lay them across the game table, move the miniatures aside and be like, I want you to read this on every single one of them. Take your time. Take your time. I've, I've done you the courtesy of highlighting them for you. OK, you've read them. OK, excellent. Now, any questions? Excellent. OK, so no questions. Spectacular. Spectacular. I'm glad we have no questions on that. We have established that Unearth Arcana is not part of the game. It's not an official part of the game. What does that mean? Well, that means that I, as the game master, have the right to determine whether we use it or not. Thank you. Okay, now let's move on to the next point here. Okay, so the next part of your question is, um, they're constantly arguing with you about using homebrew. Okay, so, um, well, first of all, let's just, you know, there's there was a Dungeon Master Guide once upon a time that literally says that the Game Master is the master of the rules. The Game Master can decide what the rules are. The game master can decide what to allow in the game and what to not allow in the game. That is the game master's prerogative for their game. So you're you want to have these discussions about allowing homebrew or not allowing homebrew, about allowing unearth arcana, whether it's official or not or not, and not allowing it or allowing it. You want to have all of these arguments and discussions. The fact of the matter is, is that I am the game master. I have the right to allow certain material in the game and the right to not allow it. And that's really all there is to it. So I will look at your homebrew. I will look at the Underarth and Akana. I, I will review it and I will decide whether I feel like it should be in the game or not. I will decide whether that homebrew you found on Reddit is crazy overpowered and should or should not be allowed in the game. I will give those things the benefit of the doubt. I will review them and I will determine whether they have a place in our game or not. But at the end of the day, it is my prerogative to allow or not allow those things. And that is the way it is. I'm the game master. I'm running the game. I have that right. So 
Now, if you don't like that and you think that I'm I'm not being fair and allowing all of these things, then you don't have to be a player in my game. I accept that not everybody will see eye to eye. I accept that I am perhaps not running the game that you want to play in. I accept that you might just be a player who wants to use all of the homebrew and Arthur Arcana stuff because either you find it interesting and fun or because you're a power gamer who wants to use the homebrew stuff because you know that it's way powerful, way too powerful, and you want to get it in the game because that's your thing and you just want to do that. But you know what? We need to accept that perhaps our play styles are not compatible. Maybe, maybe this isn't the game for you if you really want to do all of these homebrew and Arthur Canna, and it's my right to say no, if that's the game breaker for you, well, then maybe this isn't the game for you. You know, like, I don't know what to tell you, but we keep having these arguments over and over and over again. And I'm telling you, no, like if I review it and tell you, no, you need to accept that and move on with your life and play the game and stuff. But if you can't accept it, then I'm tired of having these arguments and conversations with you. This might not be the game for you, dude. You need to accept that I'm the game master and I can make these rulings. That's part of my role as the game master. The game master is not just another player, yo. I have a special role with special responsibilities and special prerogatives, and this is one of them. So that's the way it is, dude. In that conversation, there is a time and a place for having a simple conversation about things where you're discussing things. But you're going to get that feeling when you've when you've when you've had that conversation, when you've tried to be understanding, you've tried to be to explain to them how things are, tried to explain to them your point of view and they keep pushing back and they just will not accept the fact that it's your right as the game master to make those calls. There's going to be a point in time when you you've tried to be reasonable, you've tried to be understanding, you've tried to explain things, you've tried to be courteous, you've done all of those things. And it will become clear to you at some point the player is just not going to accept it and is just going to keep on arguing and arguing with you. When you get to that point, it's time to put the foot down. It's time to just tell them straight. This is the way it is. Either you accept it and stop arguing with me all of the time or you walk. Eventually, you might get to that point and you might have to just draw that line and then be prepared to execute on that if you need to. So there are some players that are not going to let it go. They're going to argue and argue and argue with you. Now, you got two choices. When you run into a player like that, you can either give in to their pressure and then <laughs> and never live it down. Because what's going to happen once you give in once to their constant arguing and complaining there, they you have now trained a new pattern of behavior in that person. They now know that if I bug them enough, if I argue enough, if I complain enough, eventually my game master will cave in and give me what I'm arguing for. This is what children do. This is what children do when they're when they're throwing temper tantrums. This is what children do when they're begging their mommy for to buy X thing and they're doing their fake crying and they're just throwing a fit. They if the mom gives in that that mother or that father is programming a behavior into that child that tells that child and they learn that when I do X and throw a fit, I get Y. I just got to keep it up long enough until mommy or daddy gets exasperated and just gives me it to make me shut up. And you that child has been trained to behave that way. Dungeon masters, game masters can train their players the same way. So you need to be like if that person, if you have decided that this is not allowed, that you're not going to allow X thing in your game and that person keeps on bugging you and complaining and complaining when you give in and allow them that thing. Don't think that it's going to stop there. It will not stop there. There'll be another homebrew thing that they'll want in the future. And if you don't think it's good for your game, guess what? They're going to keep bugging and complaining until you give in and it will not get better. It will not get better. It will get worse and worse. So you need to make a decision on whether something is allowed or not and, and stick to your guns and call it a day. And if the person won't accept that you are you have the right to run the game the way you want to run the game, then that person might not be a good fit for that game. 
and they might just need to find a different game and go bug the crap out of somebody else. And now I'd like to take a moment to thank the following awesome patrons who help support all the D&D and RPG content I create. Jan, Tyler, John, Mathematical, Monk's Death, Lucas, Deciviv, John, Patrick, Master Sly, Kira, Marcus, Lamort Games, Kyle, Danielle, Jim, Greg, Rick, Tommy, Filthy, Wyliff, Moosemane, Caden, Tan, Mr. Likanu, Rebecca, Alan, Tammy, Ivory, Michael, Jonathan, Nathan, Edward, Adam, Matthew, McJolnir, Clint, David, Dakota, Raindrop, Jacob, Stu, Sergio, XIC Flames, Kelly, Riley, Brad, Mr. The Man, Jack, BD100, Kyle, Nathan, Nordic, Andrew, Randall, DJ Assassin, Mike, Tony, Frank, Draxus, Dan, Michael, thank you all so much for your generous patronage.